walked into my electrical engineering class, I did it a little bit normal, differently than I normally do. You see, when I normally walk in, I subconsciously scan the room, I look for someone who looks like me. This time I didn't do that, because I already knew. I was the only one. And sometimes that feeling of being the only one is a lot like being the only star in a galaxy. So let's explore what that means, to be a star. I want to start by just briefly looking into what a star's existence looks like. A star is made up of a core, surrounded by a protective layer. This protective layer is maintained by a process of burning gases. It's an internal process, meaning the star is quite literally burning itself for the duration of its life. Once it runs out of gases to burn, its protective layer disintegrates, leaving it exposed to the outside gravitational forces, which push in and push in and push in against that core, essentially causing it to explode. And so if we think about what students of color go through when they walk onto predominantly white institutions or PWIs, there's a few connections we can make. The first we can look at is the existence in an atmosphere with forces that quite literally threaten our existence. Just as that star cannot survive without that protective layer due to the gravitational forces, we find ourselves entering spaces on college campuses where people are constantly looking for ways to take us down. You see, higher education in the United States was not built for people who look like me. Higher education was designed for a very specific and very exclusive group. And it maintained that notion of who belongs and who doesn't for so long that we find ourselves even maybe believing that today. And so as a student of color, and for me as a black student, when I walk onto a college campus, I have this thought of what am I going to have to do to prove myself today? to remind my peers that I do belong on this campus, that I am capable of performing at or above their level, and that I am here to make a difference and to be successful and to thrive. And so in that way, we've created a mentality in order to fight back against this notion that this force that pushes against us will defeat us, and instead we take on one of survival just like that core, the star of that core, the core of that star, we will survive. We also find ways to survive by creating similar protective layers around ourselves. Because we know that from the moment we step off of that bus, walk across our free speech plaza, we're, we're exposed to the comments of our classmates, to the gazes and stares, to the blatant symbols and actions that may remind us that we're worth mocking or threatening. And so in order to get through that, we must find a way to protect ourselves. And so we develop mechanisms, whether it's laughing off a comment or shrugging it off, giving a look back, <laughs> just like they gave to us, or full-on resistance. It comes in different forms but we know that our survival is quite literally dependent on our ability to maintain that protective layer around ourselves. The thing about this is, the star metaphor is nice, but it takes away from our reality. Because this isn't just symbolic, this is reality. This is what I go through when I walk onto my campus every day, and many of my peers experience the same way. A study in 2017 found that students of color were significantly less likely to describe their campus environment as good or excellent in comparison to their white peers. Right along with that, students of color were less likely to describe their campuses as inclusive. If we look at these two alone, what it says is that we could develop a mentality that maybe we don't belong here. We find ourselves thinking that, of doubting who we are and why we're here. We find ourselves focusing more on how I'm going to get through the day than we are on the academics. 
We find ourselves in positions where we're forced to choose between being my full self and being a scholar, because they don't always intersect. And even more, we find ourselves battling with this intense feeling of isolation, with this intense feeling that nobody understands what we're going through, that if I speak up, someone's just gonna tell me to get over it, that that one off event that happened, that's not how we usually are, and I just need to move on, or told that it's simply identity politics, when in reality, it's not a one-off incident, it's not a one-time occurrence, it's constant. This community has felt it more this year, I would argue, than we have in the past, but we can't continue to say that this is just one time that someone commits a bias-related incident. On other campuses, it might be worse, it might be a full-on hate crime. And the more we continue to allow ourselves to say that, the more we allow and perpetuate this notion for students of color that they can have these questions going through their head over and over again about whether or not they can make it through that day, whether or not they will make it through that day, because their college campus is a hostile environment. We're no longer focused on the material that's being taught to us in class because we're worried about if the, the guy standing behind us has something, has a problem with who we are. We're not focused. And it goes back to that protective layer. How much can we give of ourselves? How many times can we ask ourselves the question, am I safe? It also begs the question, and we've heard it before, why? Why go to a PWI, go to an HBCU? Why go to a college at all? There's other ways to get down that path. It's important for us to realize that for many of us, this is the only option. Whether it has to do with financial access or otherwise, this is our only way to get to that dream that we have. And it's important for us as a community to realize that we're not alone in these battles. That each day that someone looks at you and says, hey, did you, did you eat today? They're looking out for you. Each day that we link up with one another and say, today I will physically carry you through whatever you need to get through this, I got you. And each day that we walk across campus and we see that one other student, you give them that little head nod and they look at you and you don't have to say anything, but I got it and you got it, because today, there's two of us, and we'll get through it. And it, it's, it's varying in levels. It can be something as small as interpersonal interactions, or it can be something much larger, of full-on resistance, of proving, and again, taking up the space that shows we belong here, and we're not going anywhere, that tactics, regardless of how much they transform, will not remove us from this space of higher education because I'm on a mission. I know what I want to do. I know why I'm here and I will fulfill my purpose. And so we stand with one another and show our peers here and show our peers everywhere that we will survive and we will thrive. And even more so, it's important for us to understand and accept that this is not isolated to college campuses that once we leave here, we will face similar experiences in the workplace. That the tools that we develop here to quite literally survive will allow us to move into spaces like this, to know how to navigate them, to know how to fight for change in those areas, and to bring them about. And so again, I ask why? For me, the why is the next generation. For me, I need to know that my six-year-old niece will have the opportunity to pursue higher education without the hostility that I have faced. I need to know that one day, what I fight for today will mean something, will make a difference. I may not see it come to fruition, but I know that the mental tuition that I have paid day in and day out, the fatigue that I have felt, the frustration, the anger, the fear that I have felt will pay off and will benefit and that when my niece reaches that point, when she understands how her blackness shows up for others, she won't have to feel ashamed, but instead can feel proud and empowered and confident that she, just like all of us, can be stars in a galaxy and do everything 
that she needs to survive. Thank you.